I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game, so it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. So anyway, today, um, I thought that I'd actually do a lot of fractals, because in a lot of this Zero to Hero stuff, I've been doing fractals, but really late at night and not making that much progress. So I thought today, we're just going to blast, we're going to get in there, join a whole bunch of pugs, and get through as many fractals as we can, and see if we can get like a good chunk of tier 1 kind of locked down. Uh, I think even with Zero Agony, shouldn't actually be too much of a problem. Uh, to do even Fractal 25, actually, and we can maybe break into Tier 2 and start getting to Tier 2 Fractals as well and joining those. At that point, we are going to have to get ourselves a few pieces of Ascended Gear because you can see here that the Agony Resistance starts to stack up a little bit. You know, we start out at 18, we end up at 61. So I think I'm, I'm going to not be able to get away with that forever. But, of course, we're still doing Strike Missions and we'll start actually dropping some Ascended Pieces as well in Fractals. And we can probably get a few as well using some of our currencies, right? We, there's a whole bunch of NPCs we can talk to and just buy right uh, buy that stuff so we can do that no problem it's time it is time for some tier one fractals let's go let's see what insanity awaits us in the looking for group section what do we got oh they want two more people oh tier one dailies we're in okay so here we go and as you can see like a lot of people do say that the lfg is a little bit dead that i mean there aren't that many groups as you can see here but they do fill they actually do fill. Even in tier one, right? These group, this group, this is not a group that I made, right? This is a group that's total pug, total LFG. None of these players are gonna you know, know who the hell I am, right? Uh, and yeah, we've actually got ourselves very, very quickly into a tier one fragile group. Let's go. Let's do this. So, what do we actually have here? Looks like we. Ooh. Ooh. This is not- this is fire. Full Signet Mechanist. Elite Signet Guardian. Zero AR Renegade. Nine Agony Resistance Weaver. I mean, they're probably looking at me like I'm a total noob, which is true, actually. So, that is good. Let's see what we got here. Rifle Mech, I like that. I actually do like that. This is gonna be big. This is some uh, illegal Tier 1 Fractal strats here. I don't think I've done Volcanic Fractal yet, have I? Yeah, this Fractal is actually, it's one of those ones that everyone loves to see in their daily rotation because it's so fast. It's one of the, wow, it's one of like the true original old school Fractals actually. Very easy, I would say, and definitely very fast. I guess the final boss can bamboozle people a little bit. You know, we're not done, guys. Uh, <laughs> so at the start, you have to just like kill a bunch of these Grawl guards before you can move on to the next part. My team has forgotten that you have to do that, or to be honest, they probably don't know. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and clean this up for them. Uh, they'll look, they'll be none the wiser, right? They will be none the wiser. As you can see, uh, not too difficult. They're just like some basic mobs that fire projectiles. These actually can hurt on higher tiers a lot, actually, so you have to be a little bit careful of these. Uh, but you can just blind them, CC them, all that kind of stuff, and they aren't too much of an issue. Oh. I was kind of hoping they would just stay stacked there, but we can pull them in. There we go. Big pull. Love to see that. Yeah, I, I maybe will tell them. Uh, wait, should I tell them or should I, what, should I just not tell them? Maybe they'll just be like, whoa, what's going on? Why is the content not working? Why can't we do anything? But well, we're nearly done, as you can see. We just need to fill this progress bar, then all the Grawl will be defeated. And you move on to the next stage. Got some pretty cool mini games in this fractal as well. Hooray, we did it! That should be the last one. There we go. And you have to kind of go down this gauntlet-style section and avoid these burning rocks. Get a little cutscene there. Run her away from the burning rocks. Yep. I will tell them. At the start of this one, uh, you need to kill the Grawl. Okay. Now they know. They're already on the next part, though. They are- this is going to be fun because this is actually going to be a big learning experience. As there's a bit of a puzzle you have. Not exactly a puzzle you have to solve here, but I guess kind of a puzzle style mechanic. You can actually kind of ignore the rocks. They don't really do that much damage. But you can also not ignore them. It's up to you. 
All right, here we go. So what you have to do here, you, oh, no, they actually know, look, they figured that one out. You have to pick up the rocks and throw them at this Grawl uh, to break the shield. Then you can beat him down. Uh, all that time, uh, there are these veteran Grawl uh, shaman that spawn. And they'll, what they'll actually do is they'll, like, kick these captives into the lava and kill them. Uh, you have to basically prevent those shaman from doing that. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, you're in trouble. That's big bad. Not good. Nothing too crazy, though. I think, yeah, I think, oh, what the hell was that? That was a bad throw by me. Gotta get three more of these rocks, and then we're done. We have to fight the shaman. The shaman does nothing. Um, you just hit him. Break the defiance part, and he dies. There's actually a skip you can do after this, if you want to amaze your friends with how fast you are. After you beat the shaman, you can just drop down. The final boss is right over there, so you can just drop down and go to the final boss. But uh, we won't do that here, because that might, that will confuse people. That's not good. What you kind of want to do here is lure him down from here. You kind of just stand around here and the boss moves down. Looks like we aren't going to be doing that, but that's fine. Can I just fight him up here as well? Look at these drawl noises, huh? This is this is a little intense. Goodness me. <laughs> then at 25%, he leaps into the fire, right? Let's, what, let's watch the cutscene. Let's be immersed in the roleplay here. The goal goes in. Whoa. Insane. And then turns into a giant elemental over there. But we've got to get over there right now. And you just do this, like, final little parthing section here. Yeah, I think we need, like, a Grawl Grunt remix. So here on this final boss, if you, if you basically... If you stop moving, you'll get burning stacks. And, well, the, the scary thing on this guy is actually, um... The little, this boss summons a bunch of like lava, lava slugs, right? Those things actually kind of hurt a little bit. You have to be a bit careful. It's very common to see reflect abilities or projectile destruction abilities being used here because they do actually do quite a lot of damage. And then of course, the boss periodically gains a shield when you do damage to him and you have to hit like little mini hits, right? Every hit removes a stack of the shield until you can damage the boss again. If the boss actually reaches one of these villagers before the shield is removed, the boss will actually heal itself a little bit and kill the villager. So basically you need to get rid of that shield as quick as possible to resume fighting the boss and moving on as you can see the boss's hit points are fairly low so we're not really seeing a lot of the mechanics right now uh, not a lot's going on these are those slugs i was talking about that can be pretty spooky but as you can see they're really not causing us too much trouble because uh, again low damage this is the first ever fractal fractal level one wow fractal level one has been done look at that number of fractals completed in fractals of the mist we've done wow Fractal Frequenza. Our first 10 fractals have been completed. You love to see it. We're doing pretty well on this, aren't we? Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, oh, we've got to go through and do all the fractals. Look, I've done some pretty high ones, like level 21. We've got to go through and do all of these, because actually I think it might even be worth doing. Because look, we get three pristine relics, ascended salvage tool, fractal weapon crate. I mean, that's just a skin, right? So that's not really the end of the world, but there's definitely some stuff that could be valuable there. Oh, so <laughs> okay. This is gonna be fun. Uh, <laughs> Swarm. I guess I, this probably isn't too bad in tier one. Actually, like I remember doing this with pugs it used to be really painful because people are not very good at the little pre-event here. So what you have to do on this is it's got like a puzzle segment, a platforming segment into a boss segment. That's what this is. And this puzzle part or platforming part. It does definitely throw people off a little bit uh, and confuse people sometimes. Basically, there are going to be three wisps about the place here that three players need to grab and take back to these uh, kind of these wisp clefts, basically at the same time, more or less. Right now, you have less time to do this the higher you go up in the front. It looks like we have one minute. That's pretty generous here in tier one, so it shouldn't be too bad. But I think we are going to have to actually explain what to do here. Because I don't think that we're going to know how this works in this group. But that's okay. We will tell people. Hello, gamers. We must um, get all three wisps marked on the map uh, to the red uh, markers at the same time. We should uh, have one player on each wisp. And we do a three, two, one, go count. And then we all pick pick a wisp and run to the red area and hand them in. Okay. So we have now explained. Looks like we already have two players over there. So let's go ahead and grab this. So, yeah, the, the reason why this can get a little bit spooky is because when you pick this up, like, 
some pathways will actually get cut off, like trees will grow, basically. And there are a bunch of traps that can knock you over uh, and slow you down, basically. That's uh, essentially what's going on there. And of course, there's like a bunch of NPCs that are being annoying. Right, so actually we're... Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, looks like this guy's going to grab it. it. Okay, he grabbed it. That's fine. I was going to take it, but I'm just going to support this guy in that case. I can remove his immobilize and stuff like that and stun break him and give him stability. Looks like we have a fairly easy pathway here. Let's go and grab the other team. These rifles are actually pretty interesting. You can actually give like swiftness and vigor using these, which can be pretty useful. We've done it. Yeah, not too bad on tier one. I was a little bit worried about that because I, I certainly have some experience where people have a bit of difficulty with that. It can uh, definitely throw people off, but not too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> and now we just have to do a little bit of a boss segment here. So we fight the Moss Man here. This is kind of like a little mini boss, not like a proper boss or anything like that. Just beat his ass. There's a bunch of wolves over here. And then you go on to the final boss in a little bit. Very cool boss, actually. It's one of the ones that got reworked. Uh, this is a fractal that's been uh, properly reworked. So it's got a pretty cool boss, actually. Especially when you get to high tiers and the boss becomes pretty nice, actually. Here it shouldn't really do too much, though. It will get bursted down very quickly, I think. So you start this boss fight by taking this wisp. Uh, into this cleft, and then the boss will spawn. Oh, I guess any of them will do, actually. This boss has some interesting mechanics. Yeah, th you kind of want to start there, uh, because they, <laughs> the boss always leave <laughs> leaves there. But basically, the, the mechanic of this boss is that you can only damage it in this kind of green area. It has like a shield and invulnerability mechanic, and the only way to make the boss vulnerable is to lure it into one of these, this green location. And this green location is going to rotate periodically like this. You can see here that this one's going, and this one's going to pop up. Every 25% there's going to be a phase where a bunch of uh, basically forest animals will come to destroy you while the boss goes in the middle. You kill all the creatures and the boss comes back. You rinse and repeat. And over time, obviously, things get a little bit more intense. The boss is like some smashing attacks. The boss will charge at you, right? And you just need to basically make sure that you're moving the boss through these green areas. Little kind of bonus meme here. While you're in these green areas, you actually dodge it. You can dodge a lot more, right? You have like much higher um, endurance regeneration. So you want to stay in these as well. And now what we've got to do is that wisp mechanic again at 25%. We've got to get over here, grab these wisps, put them into the wisp clefts, and boom, away you go. If you fail, you actually don't die here. You just get nuked. And then you have to just quickly kind of scrabble to get the last one before everyone ends up being dead pretty much. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. Go, 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 go. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And at the end here, things just get a little bit wild. We're going to fight the boss in the middle. There's like a giant green area. The boss is actually stunned for a little bit to allow you to get into the mix. But yeah, it's basically done at this point. Just going to apply a bunch of boons, blast the boss down. Easy peasy. We have stability, so this won't do anything. And job done. Swampland Fractal Stabilizer. Oh yeah. More achievement points locked in. Absolutely huge. And now it's going to be uh, Shattered Observatory, huh? Wait, did I forget the loot? Oh, that's fine. I don't really care about the loot that much. Let's go. I've got to get that auto loot mastery, huh? I need to go and uh, do some Corteria so I can actually get to advanced logistics. I'm nearly there, actually. Look, we're already, like, halfway through. Wait, Siren's Reef? Oh, we're doing Wreck. Oh, we're doing Wreck 12. That's actually good, because that's going to progress our fractal level as well. That will give us up to level 10. Very nice. This is probably one of... I, I would want to say this is one of the least popular fractals. In the entire game. Resting place of Arabella Crow, the cursed pirate queen herself. Long as her <laughs> spread across this island. Let's see how this one goes. It's very cool thematically, actually. Right? It's got a cool theme to it. It's pirate themed, treasure themed, pirate curses. There's dinosaurs. Shouldn't be too bad. It's a, I think the reason people don't like it is because it's a little bit longer than some of the other fractals, right? It's a little bit meatier. Uh, and as a result, and people like people like a quick five-minute adventure. You know, they want to get in there, you know, quick five-minute adventure. But this one is probably going to take a little bit longer than that. And there are some parts of it that maybe drag on a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Not too bad. It'll be fine. So as you can see, it's just, you know, we're kind of used to this at this point with fractals, right? We're going to be moving through this environment, clearing out all the mobs, beating down the boss. This is a dinosaur. It doesn't really do that much. It charges at you. So, I mean, watch out for that and it can stun you. So, you know, use stability, but not too scary. Oh, no, I'm afraid. Ah! Pocket Raptors. Uh-oh. 
This is going surprisingly well. This is a weird boss. To be honest, this is one of those bosses that even I'm not entirely sure how it works because typically you kill it very quickly so you don't really see the mechanics. There's a skeleton, there are going to be adds, there's a mine, you're supposed to use the cannon to clear out the mines, but a lot of the time what you do is you just go all- you, everyone goes in there and you just burst the skeleton down really quickly. Spoiler alert, there's going to be a skeleton. Now, I don't want to alarm anyone, but chat. There is a skeleton inside of you right now. I know that's going to be a little bit scary to people, but I think I've got to tell the truth here. I've got to confront you with that reality. <laughs> so as you can see, a bunch of these mines start spawning. So ideally, we have a player up here firing the cannon and helping us clear out those mines pretty much. And it's almost like a little bit of a race against time just to kind of blast this boss down. My team's getting a little bit low, so I'm going to focus a little bit on healing here. Just to make sure that everything doesn't go to, you know, everything stays under control. Let's go ahead and heal our team up here. Looking pretty good. Then we should be able to finish off the skeleton. And there we go, good. Make sure to loot this time, unlike me. Don't forget that. And there we go. Skeleton is down. Very nice. And now, I, th I think this is the part that bothers people, right? Because there's this kind of puzzle segment where we have to throw treasure. We have to move treasure through this maze, basically. Can be a little bit of a slog, especially if you have people who don't know what they're doing. Ideally, what you do here, you kind of split up and have um, everyone kind of handle it on their own. What typically happens is that you kind of go through one by one and it takes ages. Like, what you want to do is is avoid getting caught by these... Uh, yeah, you need to throw it but basically between player to player so that you don't get uh, caught by the pirates, right? Like, the pirates will try and ambush you, essentially. So you want to, like, run through and not get caught by the spooky pirate eyes. So you throw here. And the longer you hold the treasure as well, the slower you go. So um, this is kind of the thing that typically kind of really slows things down. So you want to basically not actually hold the treasure for too long. So it's like a team little mini game here. We have to throw the treasure there. It's not really the end of the universe. Like you don't have to rush. There's no like time limit or anything. Uh, but yeah, it can certainly take a little bit. It can take a little while, right? It can definitely take a little while. Yes. What was this player doing? Oh, they're fighting a lightning wraith. I'm going to ignore the lightning wraith. Boom. Oh, I'm slow. Ah! Ah! It's fine, though. I'll throw the treasure. Oh, no. That's a bad throw. No! That was not a good throw. It activated the pirates. It's okay, though. We can kill them. Yeah, so now we're done with that. We have to go grab this treasure and take it onto the actual boat. Again, can be a little bit slow. And now begins the boat segment. Now, this, this actually kills people. This boat part is where people die. Because there's a lot of enemies that spawn here. And they can actually quickly overwhelm you. And the boss can also be a bit of a threat too. Uh, I'm just going to take as much area of effect damage as I possibly can here. Uh, so now we have to basically get treasure from each side. We have to grab this and then bring it back to the uh, to the boat. And then there will be another treasure on the other side. Wait, no, don't run away. Yeah. The ghosts win. It's, it's definitely a fragile way. You, you, you can certainly get screwed over by your composition a little bit. You really want to make sure you have a lot of area of effect damage. Fortunately, we have a lot of that. I have a lot of area damage. So does the Renegade, the Weaver. Mech is pretty good too in the other Firebrand. So we should be in very good shape. Oh, look at that! That was crazy. He threw it, blinked, and then actually caught it again. What a gamer. That was some insane mechanics from this guy. Now we fire a little mini boss. And what's interesting about uh, this is that these uh, little mini bosses, it kind of introduces you to some of the mechanics that the uh, main boss has. Or at least some of them do anyway. But they're not too scary on their own. The end boss here can be a bit of a monster. Probably won't be super scary on this tier, but, you know, who knows? Who knows? What could happen? <laughs> Things could get wild. So this is the mechanic that you'll see. Basically, these, these gusts of wind. The final boss has this too, and it will knock you off into the water. The water also has piranhas here, so you get eaten by piranhas. Watch out for that. 
And this is the also the mechanic age. You can see here more and more NPCs are moving in. And this means that you just get overwhelmed. So you have to kill the boss pretty quickly, including the final boss. Otherwise, there are going to be too many and you'll eventually die. So now we have this guy. First mate, Kallax. I'm ready to go. This guy doesn't really do too much. Has this shotgun style attack, right? I think you can figure out what to do there. Don't go in the uh, the bad. Don't go in the orange. This boss also summons AoEs on us. We just need to go ahead and move out with that, pretty much. Just drop it over there. Don't drop that on the main group where you want to fight the boss. Because as you can see, it's really annoying and does heavy damage. So when you have a mechanic like that, this player has it. They will... Oh. Ah, that player might not be moving out well. Well, that's just a little unfortunate there. But, well, we deal with it. Yeah, so ideally, you just kind of put it at the side, right? Where it's not going to be too much of a problem. All right, then. Let's go. So now he just does basically beat down a bunch of pirates. You can use the cannons here. In fact, you definitely want to use the cannons here. As you can see, the cannons do like a lot of area damage and are great for killing the pirates. So make sure to use these. Like have a few players on them. They're going to be coming in from both sides. So you don't want to overcommit to one side or the other, right? You need to kind of focus on both. Well, there aren't that many ghosts, though, actually. A lot more spawned on tier four. What the hell? <laughs> there's... Oh, there's... Whoa! Oh, my God! <laughs> Look how many there are. That's crazy. I like that. Like, our side was doing a little bit better than the other one. Oh, no. No. Don't. No. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. We have this green circle, so you need to be in the green circle to avoid your friends being eaten by the shark. Okay, looks like we are going to be dropping. Oh, that player almost moved out. They realized at the last second. It was a little bit too late, but it's okay. It's all good. But basically, this boss, just consider this boss as like a combination of all the other little bosses too. With some extra stuff as well, of course. And you see, we have this conal attack that we've already seen. We have this wind attack that we've already seen. We have that shark attack as well. Oh, no, 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 no. So basically, the shark attack, green circles in general, stand in the green circle here. you got to stand in there to prevent your friend getting eaten by the shark. Then away you go, that's it. I'm going to play a little defensively. I'm having a bit of difficulty trying to get them to stack up. Realistically, what we should be doing is being very, very stacked. There's a big tendency of new players in Guild Wars 2 to always want to stay at range. Um, and in general, you don't want to do that. Well, I mean, you can if everyone does that. If everyone stands at range, then it's okay to stand at range. But in general, you're just a lot better off just stacking in melee so that you can heal each other and do as much damage as possible. Um, uh, because as you can see right now, it's a little bit hard for me to support everyone because everyone's kind of like spread all over the place and wiggling around, which just, just complicates matters for no reason. But it should be okay. This is certainly the most intense fractal we've done so far, though, right? Where we're having the uh, the most issues. All it, it feels a little scary. I don't feel safe right now, guys. I feel in danger. I feel like we're gonna die. It's gonna finish the job here. And there you go, we did it. Pirate Slayer as well, and we got nice wreck, work, wreck twelve done. Wow. Insane. Oh look. And this gamer actually got an ascended, and that means that we can get some of the stuff in tier one, which means we can probably be very, very um, frugal and not spend stuff, and we can just use the stuff we actually get as drops, which is nice. Okay, great. And I think now we're going to do, I presume, 24? Is it 24? Must be, right? Uh-oh. Oh, they want to do, wait, they want to do Nightmare? Wait, why do they want to do Nightmare? Is there any good reason to do that? Oh, I, I'm, that's actually super interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it, because that's just another, another fractal level we can get. But I'm actually super curious on what the point is of that. Oh, wait, yeah, does nobody have 24 unlocked? That's big. That's huge. But we're in a really low fractal level group. So no one has 24, so we can't do the daily. That's actually massive. <laughs> That's so good. Let's go. We're on an adventure. We're actually on a Peepo Frog Frenzy adventure. Let's do this. Now, we have to be a little bit careful here, as there will be some agony. So we need to be very careful to not get hit. Now, because we, we don't... Um, the agony at this level is not going to hit that hard, even if we don't have um, even if we don't have any agony resistance. But we just need to be a little bit more careful than normal. Because if we do get agony, it's going to take... We're going to take a lot of um, damage and not be able to heal ourselves very well. So that's important. Also, some pretty, uh, pretty cool stories, actually, here. Like this... Uh, in the Nightmare Shattered Observatory Chaos uh, Fractal. This is a very cool story.
interesting plot that tells you about Frankie's. Now, I believe if we go in here, we get Agony, right? Oh, yeah. So now you can see, look, this is what Agony does. We're taking a lot of damage there per second, and we have reduced healing. Oh, yeah. In fact, it actually just straight up killed us. Um, so we do have to be a little bit careful about that, although most of the Agony should be totally avoidable for us. But it does mean that we are going to have a little bit of difficulty in the final phase of the fight, I guess. Uh, and also in this little intermission event where we have to capture these circles while dodging the bullet hell. So that's going to be a little bit inconvenient. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to be totally leeching on the final boss fight, actually. That's a bit unfortunate, but I I'm sure we'll get away with it. It, it is fine. <laughs> Do we have a potion? Actually, we could really use a potion to give a, you know, we, oh, there's a potion you can buy in the fractal lobby called the Anguish Tear of Alba, uh, which means that you can actually get a little bit of agony resistance by consuming an item, which would actually be really useful here, but we don't have that, unfortunately. It's okay, though. We don't know. We don't need that. We can get through the fractal. The important thing is we can get through the fractal, right? That's what's uh, important. Oh! oh. <laughs> that blade just went in deep. I like that. I'm gonna try to hold on. No! We should get the... <laughs> I don't, I don't think this guy has AR either. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, unfortunate. It's okay. We, you know, we're working with it. We're working with it. Ooh. The final boss. Terrifying. This boss is actually really well telegraphed. It charges at you. It swipes at you. It smashes the ground. Just basically don't get hit by the orange. Why are they going over there? I'm going to go over there as well. Wait, no I'm not. I will not conform. I'm starting it. Here we go. Ooh. Good song here, guys. Battle on the Breach Maker. You guys might be thinking, wait, this is like a giant worm. How is it even a real boss? Well, that's because you haven't seen the final form. Ooh. He's a plant now. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> See the bubble? Go in the bubble or you get blown up. Like this player. <laughs> oh, actually doesn't kill you. Actually doesn't one-shot you on this level. That's actually kind of interesting. I didn't know that. But you will get exploded. And you'll be pretty sad about it. So yeah, basically, yeah. 6 is and 33. It's bullet hell time. you got to capture these circles while bullet hell is happening pretty much. Oh, no. We do get agony. No. I'm going to try and hold this. I should be able to capture this, though. It should happen. Uh, right? No! I could have healed myself a bit, but I could have done that, but I thought I wasn't getting agony, but I was. Get in there, buddy. Yes! Okay, we got it. They just got to get that one now. No, stay in the circle. No, what are you doing? Get back in there! Okay, there we go. Uh, good news is, even if you die there, you do get revived after all the circles are captured. Even if you're full dead. Honestly, a little bit too easy, to be honest. Wait, what, what the hell was that? That was a very unusual visual glitch there. Okay, good. We're getting the burn here. And we have to repeat that at 33%. Okay, we're going to have to try and go all in and go for mega healing here. Okay, we have our agony happening. We just got to heal. We just got to go for it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this sucks. This is lame. I'm dead. Go team. You can do it. They go. Okay, we have two captured. All right, this is good. Uh, in this phase, you can massively hear yourself, even if you have agony, by touching those blue orbs as well. Blue is good. Red is bad. Oh, they're vape for Don't try and revive. That is not going to work. Okay, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Just get the cap. All right, it's fine. They're going to get the cap. Look. And there you go. It's as easy as that. This is why I would highly recommend you have agony resistance going into fractals like this. This is probably a little bit overkill. Because, again, this is one of those areas where you can't avoid the agony. Uh, again, in most areas you can. I believe in the next fractal we can, which is the Shattered Observatory. But in Nightmare Fractal, you cannot. Uh, the phase just repeats here. Until you go into this final phase at 15%. It actually gets easier here because the boss basically just does, does nothing. Just for fun. Just does literally nothing here. Which is kind of fun. Uh, and then you just finish him off. And there you go. That's it. We did it. Nightmare Fractal down. A little bit of a fiesta there, but not too bad. And there we go. Job done. Boom! That was an experience. We have done it. Can't you buy a ring? That's a good question, actually. 
I have 73, I have 10 pristines and 73 fractal relics. Let's see what we got. Let's have a look. What do we, what do you buy this shit? This one? Ah, ooh! Let's go, actually. Let's fucking go. We can, actually. Just by doing a few uh, tier one, this is basically, we have these pristine relics. And you get these just by doing daily stuff, basically, and some achievements. And we've actually, over the few fractals that we've done, we've actually got enough to flat out buy ourselves a ring. Uh, and because I'm going to play, be playing this hybrid build, I'm going to go ahead and grab Celestial. So the slight disadvantage here that makes things a little bit annoying, you can see this, these are the stat selectable ones that you can get basically any stat on. They're a little bit more expensive. But the generic ones, in other words, the, the core game stats you can just get with pristines. That is actually super useful. So let's go ahead and pick up, um, let's go ahead and pick up one of these. Open your stuff first. Didn't I already do that? Didn't I already open the chests? I think I did. So I think we're in business. I don't think I can open anything else, right? I guess I can do the encryptions. Let's go. Boom. Get ourselves a bit of gold. Very nice, up to 88 gold, that's great. Okay. Let's go ahead and buy a ring. I think we'll do... Well, you've got to be a little bit careful with these. If you see an item... Look here. Uh, look at the ring. Can you see how it says unique? If an item has unique, you can only equip one of them. So in other words, we can't buy... That's why there are two... Ri there are two of each that has the exact same type, right? The exact same stats. You can see that these items have the same stats. These items have the same stats. They've kind of gone away from this. It's more of like a relic of the core game. But some items are unique and you can't have two of them. So actually be aware of that. Uh, we're going to need to... If we buy this Lunaria Circle of the Moon, we aren't going to be able to get a second one. We'll have to get a Solaria Circle of the Sun. You can actually do some funkiness with, like, infusing and attuning. Yes, I'm aware of that. But just be careful. Particularly seeing as we're going to want to infuse and attune both of them. Let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, now, let's see. Could we actually attune that? Let's see if we can. I think we can't infuse it. We, there's no way we have the materials for that. But could we actually attune it? I believe we can, actually. Welcome to the wonderful world of Guild Wars 2 Fractals, where the game is co overcomplicated for absolutely no fucking reason. So there's this process called infusing and attuning, which basically allows you to add more infusion slots to get more agony resistance on rings and back pieces. You can infuse back pieces for an extra one slot, and you can attune and infuse rings for a maximum of three infusion slots. This is very important um, to... This is very important for being able to actually have enough agony resistance to do high level fractals. It's a terrible system, not gonna lie, um, but it is the system we have to deal with. Uh, ooh, yeah, we don't have the mastery. We can't do it. We have to get to agony channeler, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, to actually unlock that. So we can't actually infuse our ring just yet. Do I actually want to put an infusion in this? In that case. That's a good question. Um, it will give me plus nine agony infusion. We'll throw a plus nine in there. And we will also use the anguish tier of Alba at the same time. How much is an anguish tier of Alba actually? Let's have a look. Ah! Oh, it's one relic. Oh, that's huge. That's huge actually. That's, that's, that's so free. Okay, that gives us ten... Agony resistance. And then, yeah, yeah, that's easily enough then. We can buy five of this item per account. Are you sure you want to purchase it now? Wait, what? Is that every day or every... or forever? Let's buy five. I got enough for 32. That would be two tier two dailies. Let's see. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Aquatic. Hooray! That wasn't your first aquatic. Job done. Snow blind done. We're, we're on fire. There we go. We did it. Very nice. Very nice. Ooh, I got a hat. Nice. Exotic hat. We did it. Daily tier two volcanic. That's what we get for that. Oh, shit. Oh. That's not the best ring to get. We actually got ourselves an ascended ring. 
Not horrible. And you know, you know what was weird? There's actually like something to be said for even using it, even though the stats are kind of crappy just to have a bit more agony resistance to push further. It's a soldier rune stat, which is pretty bad, but we've actually got to this position now where we can actually be getting ascended items as drops every single day. But it's by doing a few tier, uh, tier two dailies, tier one dailies, we can be very reliably um, getting ourselves some ascended pieces, ascended trinkets just by playing fractals, which is great. But yeah, the stats are random, so you have to, you know, you have to pray to pray to RNG a little bit, but not too bad. Oh, oh boy. Oh. <laughs> this actually might be the Pug Slayer. This Fractal is a huge Pug Slayer. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be interesting. Because you have these positive elements. What you have to do here, you have to kind of work as a team to let players through. So our goal here, we have to send a player up here to press a button to let people through this gate. There's another button over there. And then you, there are more buttons in there. And you have to channel for a long time and with a console to get through the final gate. You, did like a, like a, you have to stand there and kind of work on a little panel for a little while. If you get hit, you get interrupted and it fails horribly. All the while, there are loads of dredge just firing guns at you and being annoying, right? And then you die. So this is actually a... This could be interesting to see how this goes. All right. So we've made it through. And after we're through, we can just go back, right? Like after that's done, we can go back around like this. And of course that player is on that button. So they're going to let us through. And then eventually when we get in there, that player can come around again too. So they're just going to let me through and let me in. And then that player can come around as well, of course. Let's get in there. Right. So now the big question is how are we going to handle this? So, as you can see here, this one player over there is trying to channel on the control panel, but the dredge are being annoying. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to get rid of these dredge and just kill them. Then I'll use Reflect and Aegis to try and keep them off. Let's heal this player up. I don't have a Reflect right now. Let's give them an Aegis as a baseline and just try and aggro these dredge so they don't, uh, they don't do anything. We're going to do a pull here. There we go. I really want my third tome. That will be ideal. We should be able to keep this dredge on us, though. Need to make sure that our gamers on the buttons don't die too. I've got a pull ready to go if another dredge comes up. Looks like we're actually good here. Give another Aegis. There we go, we did it. We made it. Good job, team. I love to see it. That was not as bad as I was expecting, actually. It was easy. The final boss could be spooky, though. Ah, and now here, just like on um, Aquatic, you have one of two mini games you can get, basically. Either you, um... And you either get lasers or bombs, like a bomb puzzle, where you have to stealth up and like run past some guards with bombs to blow up a door, or you fire lasers at a door. This time it's going to be the lasers. This puzzle can actually be a little bit confusing with the way you're supposed to do it, because you pick up these lasers and you can't dodge. So basically what you need to do here is you need to time your movement when you're running through to uh, basically get there without getting hit. Because if you get hit here, your laser gun breaks. So what we're going to do, we wait, and then we run like that. So that's what you do. You wait, and then run until the AoEs are about to move over you. And you get over here, and you take your shot. You shoot, the door takes damage, and you repeat. You can't do it more than once, because it basically blows up. Your gun explodes. So it's going to wait here. I don't really want to get hit, because I'll get put in combat, which I don't really want. And you rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. We just wait, and away we go. There we go. So you've got a good amount of time to get through. There it is. The door is being destroyed. I think we should get ourselves a mastery point for doing this. Which is nice. And there we go. Great. We have ourselves a mastery point. Which is really what we want. Because again, we can get close to that auto loot. And get our fractal masteries going after we have the auto loot as well. Alright. Alright. And so now after that, we just go to the final boss. Uh, we actually got the easy final boss because, hey, get, check this out, guys. There are actually two final bosses as well. There's a giant ice elemental that is a massive asshole, or there is a dredge mining suit. But we actually got the easy one because basically the, the trash mobs you see here will tell you which one it is. And because it's dredge here, it's going to be the dredge power suit, uh, which is a lot easier, actually. Um, but yeah. Now, the gimmick here, it looks like the players are aware of it. The gimmick here is that you have to lure the the power suit. It aggro's on random people, same as the ice elemental. You have to lure it under these pots of um, kind of like molten metal uh, to make it have a debuff to make it take way more. It's got like a million health, right? Like, well, not even that. It's got tens of millions of health. 
so it will take you ages to kill it normally. You have to basically, one player is going to get fixated like that, and then a player up there has to drop the oil on it, or the molten metal, to basically make it super hot so it takes a zillion damage, otherwise it will just take you ages to kill it. And that's exactly what we've done right now. And now we just have to basically burst it as hard as we possibly can. Looks like we actually are going to have the DPS to get it done in one. Look at that. 70,000 damage in burning coming through there. So as you can see, there's some pretty serious DPS. Yeah. Now, this is a big agony attack. We have to be careful there. See that purple? That implies there's going to be an agony attack. We don't have a lot of agony resistance, so we want to be careful. There we go. Oh, nice. We got Master of the Molten Ore. Only use four buckets. We only use one. We get our loot. Job done. That one can be a little scary. That one's a little bit scary on higher tiers. <laughs> well, I may be over-prepared for that one a bit. That was maybe... Uh... <laughs> I hope that actually watching stuff like this in the um, Zero to Hero series actually helps people relax a little bit about fractals. Um, because I think people feel very neurotic about getting Ascended Gear before you go in there and getting Agony Resistance. And to be clear, obviously my experience level here is allowing me to do this without Agony Resistance. But if you don't have like perfect Agony or you have like a little bit less than you need, uh, you're absolutely good to go. You don't need full Ascended to do um, entry level Fractals. I would obviously recommend getting as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, you know, I haven't been having too much difficulty. The only one that kind of trolled me a bit was Nightmare, right? Because it has unavoidable agony resistance. Everything else is kind of fine. But yeah, not too much of a problem as you can see there. We did it! We are a failure and it feels bad. And there it is. Pretty short fractal, pretty quick fire and job done. Very nice. Okay, this is it. This is the final battle, final boss battle for tier 1 fractals. We are technically in tier 2 right now. But we have illegally broken in. Illegal tier 2 fractal here. To finish the job. And the, the significance of this is actually because you can, you can only access the looking for group for tier 2 if you have a fractal level. Oh, yep, there's Agony. Ow. I should rally though. Oh, no, I might. No, I won't. Oh, yeah, they don't die. So I actually won't rally off these, which kind of sucks. The significance of this is that I will be able to actually look at tier 2 fractals in the LFG, allowing me to access those tier 2 fractals much easier, rather than having to kind of piggyback off other players, which is going to be very convenient for me. And there you go, that's it. That is it. Very good. Fra and look, we got, we, oh, check that, we got, we got the um, fractal fighter as well. I think you get like an achievement for beating a bunch of fractals in a certain tier. And we get two gold. It's kind of a repeatable thing too. We get the Fractal Fighter's Cash, which includes what? Do we get any pristines for that? We didn't get any pristines, but we got a bunch of relics, some of the Fractal Potions, Fractal Research Pages, and two gold. Very nice. And we actually have 47 encryptions. We've got some serious gold here, actually. I love that. Very nice. Do I actually want to spend relics for gold? I think the answer to that question is actually yes. Good job, team. Uh, thanks. I will head off now. I think the answer is yes. Okay, because we can get ourselves some big money here. Yeah, 30 of those, and we can open 30 encryptions. And let's just take a look at this, right? Um, I'll, I need to sell some stuff first, though, actually. Let's just sell some of these green items. I can't be bothered to salvage this. I'm just going to sell it. So the significance here, gamers, is that... We can spend six gold here and 30 relics, which is really not a big deal. And let's see how much gold we get out of this. We should get a lot more than six gold. So we've got 81 gold. We were at 87, nearly 88. Let's see how much we get. Here we go. We open all of that. Bear in mind, we kind of get the feedback loop. You get a few keys when you open them. So let's go ahead and do that again. And there we go. We've got some relics in there as well. A bit of a refund. And let's go ahead and see how much gold we make. Look at that. So we actually made not super crazy money, but we got another kind of three gold, four gold there, right? We were around 87.8. Now we're at 91.7. And you can do that once a day. It's always worth to buy the deeply discounted ones and 30 of those a day for all of your encryption needs. Make a bit of free money. And actually, that's not, it's actually more than four gold that we earned there because we also got a bunch of tier four, right? Got a bunch of tier four stuff there as well. It's pretty good. Not bad. I don't have the Fractal Mastery, actually. So it will even get better. It will even be better. Because we'll get um, Masters. We'll improve our rewards even further. Down the line.
Very nice. Very, very nice. Not too bad. Without the mastery, you sell them on the TP. Well, there you go. You should sell them on the TP, guys, if you don't have the mastery. So I just threw away all my gold, but I showed people how it works. Hooray! I like that. 